Hi there, I'm Britton Watkins and I'll be your guide for beginning to learn Xi'an. So you might be asking yourself, why would I learn a fictional language? While it's true that understanding Xi'an or any other language in the end isn't going to be the key to the game, the production team here understand that this kind of investment in building out the universe has big payoffs, not just for richness in gameplay, but because it also gives you another dimension in which you can engage in and get enjoyment out of immersing yourself in these worlds. Fictional languages can become real, even if the original speakers are fictional. While this series is intended to introduce you to the foundation of speaking and writing, just as you can't learn Spanish or Japanese in an hour, this course will not be completely comprehensive. We're also looking to enlist your help in directly contributing to the language as well, but we'll get into that a little bit later. In this first chapter in this series, we'll be sharing with you a brief introduction to the Xi'an culture, an overview of the online resources that are already available or will soon be available to help you learn, and finally, some basic words and phrases to get you started. So, who are the Xi'an? I'll include some links in the description below that will give you a more comprehensive backstory, but in a nutshell, the Xi'an are an alien species that have a reptilian type appearance, and they've served as foils for humanity, both politically and socially. They can live for hundreds of years, so there's a somewhat austere and restrained element to their interactions. They tend to play their cards very close to their chest, are generally perceived as being diplomatically manipulative, and thanks to their long lifespan, they tend to plan for decades rather than years. Now, behind the scenes, the developers looked to Han Dynasty era China as an initial inspiration for the culture, just as much of the inspiration for the UEE comes from the late Roman Empire. The linguistic choices I've made in constructing the language take various influences from Asia into account. Chris wanted them to write vertically, because there is so much verticality in their general design aesthetic, which had a direct impact on the formulation of the alphabet, just as their culture and philosophies end up having impact on the words they use and how they frame things in daily life. Pitch is very important, and there are long and short vowel distinctions. For example, in the greeting word Shesuelen, the first syllable has a long A sound, and it's at a higher pitch than the rest of the word. And the meaning behind the greeting comes from the semantic component, she meaning meeting or coming together, sui meaning converse or chat, and lin representing harmony or lack of confrontation. The greeting itself is full of hopefulness that the encounter will go well. The Xi'an might seem a bit austere at first, but once you get to know them, there is a lot of fascinating stuff going on behind the initial faces and attitudes that you'll encounter. The basic sounds of the language are pretty easy to produce, but in the beginning it might be hard to hear the difference in she and xie, for example. The first she is at a high pitch and it has a long a sound. The second she is in a mid-range pitch and has a short vowel. And with she the tongue is curled back a bit in the mouth and with xie it's forward. If you speak Mandarin though, you'll likely hear the difference more easily than if you don't. It also has only nine verbs, and they don't have conjugations. But those little simple-looking verbs come in six different flavors of politeness, and when the politeness changes, the verb itself changes too. And of course, the verbs have to work with other content words that serve to make the language fully expressive. The written language will likely come across to you like Chinese or maybe Korean, but it's not. It's an alphabet like Korean in which the letters are written in blocks, but that was done so it could meet Chris's requirement to work vertically. You may have noticed already that it also makes it work horizontally too. Handy. So it's not as easy to learn as the Greek alphabet, but it's not as difficult to learn as Chinese or Japanese or Thai. It's almost all very logical. So, how will you be learning all of this at first? We are preparing these videos. They will help you primarily with the sounds of the language and put you on the right path to learning how to read the script. They will also teach basic words and phrases and introduce you to enough grammar that you can start formulating your own thoughts and sentences in Xi'an, which the Xi'an call, by the way, Wu Shan. But beyond these videos, there is a big document that you will be able to get as a PDF 
It's not a bunch of step-by-step -step lessons either per se, but it has a tremendous amount of material in it and details on the language that these videos will not be able to cover. Some of you will be able to digest and make more sense of this document than others. So that you can all help each other out, there is also a forum on the RSI site where you can come engage with me and other learners. There we'll share ideas and answer each other's questions. I created, or rather I'm the person responsible for the inception of Xi'an as a grammatical fictional language, but we all together will make it real. The dictionary for Xi'an is a hosted digital database and it will grow over time as the language grows. And finally, on the topic of learning to speak it, I can't do that fluently yet either. We're all in this together. So I'm looking forward to meeting you on the forum. Come on over and introduce yourself. Before we wrap up this segment by starting to learn some useful words and phrases, I want to point out to you again that by engaging with everyone else who cares about this language, you will be expanding its scope and importance. As the Xi'an culture grows, and as the writing team and technical folks at Star Citizen build out more and more elements of their society, cities, worlds, and systems, the language will grow also. And the Xi'an, despite being humanoids, are very unlike humans in so many different ways. Star Citizen thinks of you as being a vital part in this experience. So by understanding this alien civilization and talking about them and writing stories in their lore, in their culture, in their own language that you can learn here, over time, you'll be on a path to influence how Xi'an civilization evolves to be more fun and engaging for everyone, even the people who are not learning the language. Yeah. Regarding that, the Xi'an might even say, Su Huang e Puang. It's surely of great importance. Okay, let's learn some Xi'an. The next video chapter will go into detail on the sound system of the language, but for now, let's just take a repeat after me approach and learn some basic words and phrases to get started. We'll begin by going back to Shesvelin. This is the greeting for hello when meeting people. You might recall from earlier in this video that the parts break down into something that means more or less meet and chat amicably. But that's not important now. Let's just learn to pronounce the word. The pronunciation will show up along with the native Xi'an script. Omyasya upinoa. Repeat after me again. Sheswilin. 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 This works as a proper way to say hello or greetings or good day to anyone you know or don't know. I find it a good idea to always repeat things at least three times to help lock them into my brain. So if I say Sheswilin to you, what do you say back? To get the first sound, the X sound right, try saying an SH with your tongue curled back a tiny bit. Sheswilin. Next, let's learn how to ask someone how things are going. We'll be polite about it, so this version is a bit long. Athumashoa. First, just listen at full speed. Athumashoa. 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 This is actually three separate words, ath, u, and mwishoa. They are all at a low pitch, so your voice should not jump around. Keep it all flat and emotionless in terms of the pitch. Otimyashia. Repeat after me again this time. Ath mwishoa. Ath mwishoa. Ath mwishoa. The low pitch does not indicate that the Xi'an don't really care how you're doing, even if it comes across that way. It's simply coincidental that all of these words feature a consistent low pitch. The shorter, more familiar way to ask this, something like, what's up, is just ashoa. Again, all low and flat tone, ashoa. If you get all human emotional and you let your tone jump and you're all like, all oh, ashoa, a Xi'an would likely not even understand what you're asking. The most common answer to this question is kol, with a long o. It sounds a lot like the English word kol. It has a generically positive meaning like well or fine or a thumbs up. Otwe, let's repeat. Kol, kol, kol. And to your having done well with that, I might just say again, kol. And it would mean good job in that context. 
Whenever anyone is learning a new language, the phrase, I don't understand, is generally very useful. Here we go. Otoe, e yo nai, e yo nai, e yo nai. I don't understand. It literally means that you don't have a grasp of what is being asked. However, if you did understand the question, but you don't know the answer, then you would say, e we. Let's practice. Repeat after me. E we. E we. E we. We is an important philosophical concept in Xi'an culture of the void or nothingness or the great unknown out there. So this tiny little two-word phrase is basically saying that there is nothing in me that can contribute to answering your question. Now just for fun, let's learn to count in Xi'an from zero to ten. Here we go. We'll start with zero. Hu, ya, xian, pui, yu, kua, lea, wo, teeth, loa, kyun. Did you hear the pitch jumping around a bit? If you did, that's good. If you didn't, let's give some examples of why it's important to learn to hear pitch in Xi'an. Three of these numbers are distinguished from other common words by pitch alone. Four, you at a high pitch contrasts with you, meaning man or male. Five, qua, at a low pitch contrasts with qua, meaning opinion. Quai, qua, could mean five opinions, for example. Nine, loa, with a rising pitch, is very different than the meaning of loa, at a flat middle pitch, meaning eat or drink. We'll talk more in the next lesson about the importance of pitch. For now, let's just practice these in order again. Repeat after me, please, and watch the extra information on the screen to see a visualization of what's going on with the pitch patterns. Here we go. Hu, ya, xian, pui, yu, kua, lea, wo, teeth, loa, kyun. Before we say goodbye, let's learn how to say goodbye. Repeat, please. Aflekol. 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 It literally means fare thee well, or something very close to that. Your voice pitch is low and then goes up and then falls. Each syllable is different. Again, here we go. Aflekol. Aflekol. Athleko. Okay. Cold. Next time, we'll be diving deep into all the sounds of the language. It should give your tongue and your brain a great workout. Until then, choa, which means thanks. And athleko.